Next up, we're on the coast. You guys, it's so peaceful here and I actually really didn't know what to expect because I drove into a gated community but all the homes were so different. And then I come to your house and it's different again in the coolest way. I really love what you've done with the facade. Was this a renovation or a knockdown rebuild? It was a renovation. Total renovation. Yeah, right. Yep. We say it used to look like a Robina box. No one else wanted to buy it and we saw a lot of potential. So we thought, let's do a big reno. I mean, that's how you find an awesome house, right? It's the one that no one else wants, that yeah. you see potential in. Yes. For the reno, because we live on a nature reserve, we had to stay within the existing envelope. Mm. And so we wanted to drastically change what it looked like and update it. Yeah, but we're really proud of it. I mean, Brad did all the work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm very proud. Yeah. You've done a beautiful job. I just love brick. I think it's so timeless and the way you've applied it to this facade, I think is really going to stand the test of time. Yeah, I used one of my architects from Melbourne and I wanted something that was sort of a beach feel, but a little bit Melbourne, something different, but I didn't want any maintenance. I'm big on, yes, you got to wash everything, but I don't want to be painting everything every few months up here with the weather. And does this give me some sort of indication of what I can expect to see inside? Yes. Well, that. I would say that the house is quite modern mm -hmm. and you can expect a lot of colour, a lot of textures. We love colour and texture, mm. so Correct. you can expect to see that and some uh, beautiful views. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go take a look. No okay. Worries. Well, we will talk about your very beautiful kitchen, obviously, but I just want to first talk about that amazing view over that stunning reserve and the waterways, and I love the way you have framed that with that picture window. It's called Tallow's Creek, and so it runs basically behind this suburb, Suffolk Park, and then it empties into the ocean right there. You've made some beautiful selections. Who gets credit? I do for the Cristanza. Okay. I found it. Well, because I love this green. The green is, yeah, so yeah. my my favorite color is green. Obviously, the house there's like green everywhere. But um I found this with a a retailer in Brisbane and it's called Cristanza Quartzite. Beautiful. Yeah. And you've kept the palette super calm but you've brought in the warmth as well. Well, part of it reminds us of the ocean, yeah. depending on the time of the day, um, with the light on it. And that's probably one of my favorite features is the way the guy um, put all the mitres together. He mm. did an incredible job. So what you've achieved here is ultimately a three level home. Correct. And did that come with some challenges? It did. In this room, there was a big beam going through here and a, and a pole going through the staircase. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so we had to try and get rid of that. And then I didn't know what to do with this room, mm. whether I put multiple beams to make it flow. And so we just plastered over it and lost about 200 mil of height everywhere, but I don't feel it's compromised. Yeah, you get that feeling of compression and expansion, and open, as yep. architects love to say. Yes. So it's a deceptively large house. It's sort of not until you get in that you realise, but you've got a fair bit going on, right? There's a fair bit of floor space, you've got a pool. Does it cost a lot to run? Uh, it does, and that's why we decided to, you know, upgrade the solar and we wanted a big enough system to sort of help run the house with batteries because around here we do have a lot of blackouts. For example, probably a couple of months ago, it was for 40 hours. One of the biggest challenges Brad and Amber faced, they really had an existing solar system, but they were impacted by the cyclone, and when that happened, they lost power completely. 
they chose to install a brand new system through our good friends at Resync. Now when they inquired about what system to install, they chose to go for the Anker Sol XX1 for two very important reasons. First and foremost, it's modular, which means they could not only get battery storage that suited their needs today, but in 12 months from now, they could add more modules if they needed to. The second key component was blackout protection. You know, when you go through a cyclone, it's all well and good having battery storage, but if it's not connected to another device that allows you to have blackout protection, it means it's not generating power at all during a blackout. In this scenario, not only is the sun shining and capturing the beautiful rays and powering the batteries and the home, but if the power was to cut off, they still have that backup, powering the circuits connected to that battery. When installing a solar power system and battery storage here, you've got to be considerate of the actual surroundings. In this case, they have water at the back door of their property and then the ocean just around the corner. Any electrical component can be affected by salt mist degradation. So in this scenario, the rating on Anker Solix's products is phenomenal. It literally has been designed for coastal areas like Australia and like the majority of properties that hug the Australian coastline. This is where the party's at. Yes. But just a really like low-key party yes, <laughs> so yeah. that you can actually listen to the birds <laughs> and let people go home at like 9 o'clock, right? Oh yeah, or like 8.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've done a beautiful job inside and out, and thank you so much for having us through. Thank, thank you. you.